Hello and welcome to Controversial Coasters with Contriver, a series where I discuss extremely unpopular opinions that I have regarding roller coasters or amusement parks and attempt to justify them even though 90% of the community will disagree with them. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at what some people believe to be the most intense roller coaster on the planet, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This Intamin Giga is famously known for delivering an extreme adrenaline rush through its incredibly fast-paced ride experience and positive g-forces. Now, prior to riding Intimidator 305 for the first time, I had fully expected expected this ride to be so extraordinarily intense that it would be uncomfortable based on how it was portrayed. People claim that this ride makes you gray out more than any other coaster, and that its positive g-forces are astronomical. If you know me or have seen a handful of my videos, then you likely would know that extensive positive g-forces are uncomfortable and unenjoyable in my eyes, and hence a big reason why I dislike Goliath at Magic Mountain. That being said, I fully expected Intimidator 305 to be so ridiculously intense that I would hate it because of how intense it would be, so that's when I started the excessive i305 slander. Just like Ghost Rider, I would randomly bully this ride and poke fun at it for no reason and in literally any context. Last summer, I had the opportunity to actually ride this coaster a total of 10 times, 2 on the first day I was there and 8 on the second day I was there. Once again, I had expected an insanely intense experience and was fully bracing myself to be overwhelmed, but on my very first ride, it actually turned out that the complete opposite happened. The first turn pulled noticeable positive g-forces, but on my first ride, I literally didn't gray out in the slightest. It didn't feel uncomfortable at all, and honestly, it felt like a very graceful first turn. Granted, this was in the morning, and I was somewhere in the middle of the train, but even on my second ride where I rode in the very back, it still felt the exact same. During the second day I was there, it was much hotter, and I got the majority of my i305 rides in the late afternoon slash evening to give it a chance to warm up in the hopes it was running faster. During a few of those rides, I will admit that it did feel a bit faster, and I actually grayed out a few times on that first turn, but it was still inconsistent as it wasn't plastering me with with positives and completely blacking out my vision like the helix of Goliath at Magic Mountain always does. As for the rest of the layout, uh, the first airtime hill is decent, it's nice floater. From there, there's there's nothing eventful until the first of two insanely snappy transitions. These two transitions are honestly the best part of this coaster in my eyes. They are very reminiscent of Maverick's first two transitions, but I will say that Maverick's felt a little more aggressive and a little tighter. Not only that, but the two snaps on Maverick occur in a much more rapid succession. On I-305, you traverse the first snap and then gently ease out the other direction direction, and then you traverse the second snap. After another uneventful turnaround, you proceed to the two small airtime hills which deliver little to no airtime, probably because those trims hit really hard. And because of those trims, the entire rest of the ride honestly feels like it's crawling in comparison to the first half. I didn't really mention this, but i305 does have some really outstanding pacing during the first half of the ride as it spends all of its time really low to the ground, flying at a super high speed. The second half, however, loses all of its aggression and intensity, to the point where it feels a little incomplete upon hitting the final brake run. So over Overall, Intimidator 305 simply did not deliver a crazy aggressive or intense experience that I was expecting. Therefore, I was severely underwhelmed. In terms of pure intensity, there's a lot of other rides that will do a much better job at plastering you with positive g-forces, like pretty much any BNM invert, especially Banshee. You also have Viper, which has the potential to pull up to 6 positive g's on its second and third loop. I already mentioned Maverick and Goliath, with Maverick being much more aggressive and Goliath feeling much more intense. You've also got Skyrim which is both aggressive and pulls positives. Dare I even say Millennium Force feels a bit more intense on the first drop and first turn. And so with all that being said, I expected I-305 to be crazy intense and exhilarating, but it turned out to be very underwhelming. And for that reason, I can only say that this coaster is very overhyped and overrated. So much so that I wrote a parody about it. With all of these people out there saying it's an extremely intense roller coaster, only for me to be considerably underwhelmed, I simply can't help but say that there is way too much hype around the ride and that it just doesn't deliver that intense experience that everyone says it does. Okay, so I think Intimidator 305 is overrated, but I don't want to completely disregard this ride because I still want to mention the great things about this coaster. First of all, it, it's got a 300 foot first drop, and even though it has a much wider apex than Orion's 300 foot first drop, it is still fun and lasts a long time. Of the three Giga coasters that I've ridden, I think I-305 does have the weakest first drop, but marginally. Next comes the first turn, which like I mentioned, sometimes makes you gray out, but sometimes doesn't. The first airtime hill is fun, it's some relaxing floater, nothing too special. And then it just kind of wiggles around and turns until it gets to the extremely powerful transitions, which are almost as strong as Mavericks, but either way, they are incredible, and to me, they are the best part of this coaster. These two snaps really carry this ride, honestly. I kind of already talked about the rest of the ride. A trimmed and mediocre airtime hill, another mediocre airtime hill, another transition that is significantly less snappy than the first two, and then a sharp ascent and whip into the final brake run. If it weren't for those two Maverick-like snaps, then this would probably 
be my least favorite Giga, but because of those super fun moments, this is currently my favorite Giga. Give me a month and a half to ride Fury though, then I might reassess that statement. And so overall, do I think that this is a bad coaster? Just like Ghost Rider? No. I don't hate it, or even dislike it. It's not a negative experience, and I don't get off the ride with regrets. I just don't think it's as good or as intense as people describe it to be. That being said, it is still a fun roller coaster and is currently resting low in my top 15. Not sure how much longer that'll last though, because by the end of the year, I would have ridden Fury 325, Velocicoaster, Iron Gwazi, Pantheon, and Iron Rattler. Maybe. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. Even though I'm pretty much expecting 90% of you to disagree with me and say that Intimidator 305 is much more intense than I describe it to be, I'm still gonna go out and ask you to leave a comment describing your thoughts, opinions, or review of Intimidator 305. But anyways, if you did end up enjoying the video, then please remember to leave a like and subscribe with the notifications turned on so you'll be alerted whenever I upload a new video. But until then, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.